Beethoven's euphoric statement of universal brotherhood, the Ninth Symphony, is the focus of this program. Riccardo Muti leads the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and Chorus. Beethoven completed his Symphony No. 9 in a gray, drab apartment building on Vienna's Landstrasse. Guests describe a chaotic home of dirty linens, broken coffee cups, and loose manuscript paper. His disheveled appearance mirrored his sense of isolation, for he was almost completely deaf. But the 53-year-old composer was still adored by many patrons and musicians, and the premiere at the Theater am Kertnertor was truly an event his first onstage appearance in a dozen years. The struggle to communicate is a narrative that runs throughout the Ninth Symphony. It begins with 16 bars of mysterious murmurings that grow out of silence, like the sound of an orchestra tuning up. After a frenzied scherzo and meditative adagio, the fourth movement is a miniature symphony unto itself, complete with fugues, recitatives, and a so-called Turkish march. At its climax is the choral setting of Friedrich Schiller's Ode to Joy. From the age of 23, Beethoven had wanted to set this poem. It was really a glorified drinking song, the sort that Freemasons would sing at their lodges on weekends. But after some 19 attempts at writing a theme, Beethoven landed on this melody, which has the tunefulness of a national anthem. According to participants, the premiere of the Ninth was a scrappy affair. Reviews were mixed. Fortunately, the public didn't care. A famous anecdote tells of how one of the singers turned Beethoven around to receive the audience's tumultuous applause. For generations, Beethoven's Ninth has accompanied the signing of peace treaties, Olympic ceremonies, and concert hall dedications. It was performed in 1989 in Berlin after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Thanks to its finale, the Ninth remains the paradigm of freedom, joy, and fellowship in classical music. Yeah.